Las Vegas. Nothing, nothing special happens at, at that point. But so August, we're now in August 2002. And he encourages me. He says, listen, why do you bet where you bet when you don't get any benefits? You know, the, in Las Vegas, there's lots of different ways to get rebates of your betting money and other sorts of benefits. He says, if you want to bet through me and my Boardwalk account, which is the most famous rebate shop, um, you know, I'm happy to flow the rebates back to you, um, which is a considerable amount of money. Uh, and I was a little reluctant, but I decided, okay, what, what the hell? And so I started putting my bets in through him. Uh, in, th in that August of 2002, I did quite a bit of traveling, so I was calling him from you know, other places to, to put the bets down. And for the first two weeks, I was losing pretty regularly. And uh, by, by August 15th, I probably owed him about $9,000. And I told him I was going to, you know, I told him I'd pay him any way he wanted or, and so forth. And he said, well, you're going to be in Los Angeles. I'm actually going to be in Los Angeles, too, at the same time. If you can bring cash, uh, you can just pay me then. He, was also, he, he, didn't, he said, we can also wait to the end of the month if you want, whatever, very, very flexible. So I fly out, and at some point in the day, he meets me, and I pay him the 9000 cash that I owed him. And it, it turned out that while I was out there, I had a few extra days where my friends were all busy and I didn't have anything to do. And Peter said, why don't you just come to Vegas? Why don't you drive to, uh, to Las Vegas? And he said, and this time do it right. Let me put you up in a, in a real place and, you know, cut back and enjoy yourself. Don't make it so much work. So I said, okay, you know what, what the hell? And so I drove, at the time I was in San Diego, and I drove out to Vegas. There's a sort of a funny story. He had gotten me a suite at the Bellagio. It was probably about 2,000 square feet. It had three complete bathrooms in it. It was two stories high. It took, I don't know if you've seen the Bellagio where there's the fountains out front. It had two-story windows overlooking the, the fountains. I mean, just a phenomenal palace. And um, he had gotten it for me for two nights. The, the first night was the night I was arriving. The, the irony of it was I got uh, you know, about four-fifths of the way from San Diego to Las Vegas, actually probably even crossed into Nevada territory and then was consumed with sleepiness, with tiredness. Mm -hmm. And I was so worried that I was going to crash the car that I had to pull over to the side of the road and, and sleep and take a nap. And the thing that was very funny is, I don't know if you've ever been on that high stretch of highway. This is, at this point, I'm on the highway that's the major highway out of Las Vegas going west to you know, Los Angeles. But there's also a place where you branch off for San Diego. And at every single exit off the road, you see endless amounts of trucks these huge trucks, trucks you never see in New York City. They're too big to come into New York City. And it's, it's drivers of these trucks pulling over the side of the road to, to sleep and rest. And I come into these things, and I was in some little shitty rental car. And you know, I was terrified that I'd get run over by one of these 18-wheelers if I wasn't careful where I parked. I was also terrified because you know, there's lots of rumors about what goes on at these various truck stops, and I didn't want to, anything unfortunate to happen to me. But I also felt I had to sleep. Long story short, I'd sleep for an hour, hour, 15 minutes, and then I'd wake up and I'd start back on my journey, and I wouldn't get very far before I'd start falling asleep again, and I had to stop again. Ended up arriving to Las Vegas at about 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. in the morning, <laughs> and, you know, to go to this thing and realize you know, it was probably a $4,000 a night suite and wasted uh, one night of it uh, you know, 30 miles from Las Vegas, sleeping every five miles. <laughs> During this stay in Vegas, uh, there was something which in retrospect may have been a tip-off that something was astray. Uh, while I was there, uh, somebody had called me. I got a, a call that a, a woman named Lola, who we've also talked about, was trying to reach me. It's Lola Mohamedova. Lola's a dear friend of mine. Uh, I've known her for about six or seven years. She uh, cuts my hair, which is sort of hard to believe, but she, when I get my hair cut, she's the one who does it. But she's also a, a dear friend. Anyway, she was calling and wanted to speak with me. Lola does not speak any English, um, so conversations are necessarily in, in Russian with her. Mm -hmm. And uh, so in this Bellagio suite, and e even with other friends around, uh, Brett was certainly there, Brett Birdsong, I have a conversation in Russian. And as I'm speaking in Russian, uh, Falcone all of a sudden gets incredibly nervous and starts pacing about, starts sweating, 
get sort of red blotches on his face. And I, I hang up the phone, and he's, he says, what the hell was that about? I'm like, that was just a girl in Russia who wanted to chat with me. He's like, are you plotting to kill me? <laughs> and uh, I said, no, that's just, and, and you know, the moment passed. But, uh, you know, I, I realize now this guy was controlling every moment, and he wasn't prepared for the fact that I could speak with Russians, and he wouldn't understand what was going on, and it could be a, a, a chink in his game. Um, at the time, I just thought it was a little quirk and didn't, didn't think anything more of it. So uh, now an interesting thing also happens at this time. Falcone knows that I have various internet and phone betting accounts that I use for betting horses. And he gives me a com convoluted complex story about how he has a friend who uh, needs to bet the horses and can I let this friend access my horse betting account. Now, meanwhile, here's a guy who has put in bets for me, generously given me rebates off my bets, um, has given me $20,000 worth of credit. You know, I could have stiffed him uh, at any time. Um, and so who was I to say, no, you can't use my account? So I tell him, well, there's $2,000 in it. Here's the code words, the passwords, whatever. Long story short, I come back, and in my phone betting account is $23,000. Okay, so this friend of his won a lot of money in, in the account. So I'm like, okay, I owe you 21000 How do you want me to, to get it to you? I'm thinking, I need to go back. I think I came out to Vegas and brought the cash and just gave it to him in cash in Vegas. Um, yeah, in fact, I'm sure of that. That is, that is the way I gave him that cash. But again, here I was, I could have said, you know, fuck off, creep, and just kept the money. It was in my account. I could have changed the passwords. Uh, 